Hey, uh, <clears throat> my name is Andy, uh, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the game of life uh, implementation that I built, uh, calling this presentation Life Finds a Way. I don't know how well these images are coming through, but uh, I found a little picture of Jeff Goldblum with the Life Finds a Way from Jurassic Park tattooed on somebody's arm. That is not my arm. I do not have a Jeff Goldblum tattoo. Um, yeah, so Kyle and I built a uh, CPU a little while back, 16-bit uh, RISC CPU with 250 words of memory. Uh, and so the challenge that Kyle just kind of, you know, nerd sniped me with, bumped on my lap was, hey, wouldn't it be fun if we could run the game of life on this? And I said, uh, and I probably should have just said no. Um, but I went ahead and started thinking about it. So yeah, it's a 16-bit CPU. The, the really important thing to keep in mind is we basically had eight instructions and only three of them are math and none of them are highly useful. Two of them are different forms of add and one of them is NAND. In theory, you can build anything you want out of those operations. In practice, it's really hard. Uh, so the challenge for us was you know, to make that work. And so uh, I ended up writing a program, uh, an assembly language program for this thing. I'm not gonna bore you with assembly language. I'm gonna try to wow you with how I actually fit this into 255 uh, words of memory. So um, basically this is the layout of the program. So at the very beginning, we have a little bit of code that jumps into the main part of the program. Um, and then uh, we have the board represented here. We have the buffer that we used represented here, big chunks of code, and then uh, the stack, and then a few uh, pieces of data that I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, yeah, the code is broken up into kind of four main pieces. There's the main program that basically has an outer loop and an inner loop. Uh, inside the inner loop, we calculate for each cell, we, we calculate the next uh, generation value for that cell. And then um, we write those next generation values into a buffer. At the end, we copy the buffer back to the board. And then we strobe this write byte that I created that basically lets me know, hey, we're done with this generation and now we can move on to the next. Um, so let's see here. Uh, um, Anyway, uh, yeah, and so uh, what do we do? So we've got a board. So just talk about the board a little bit. Uh, because we didn't have a lot of space, I basically have a 16 by 16 board. It's uh, 16 words, uh, 16 bits per word. So uh, we managed to squeeze uh, 256 cells in here. So you might be able to see here's my values up here. Uh, this test board is basically uh, what's known as a traffic light and a glider. The traffic light actually um, covers the uh, northeast, southeast uh, corner, and on the next generation, it'll actually flip sideways. And so then it will cover the uh, northwest and northeast corners of the board. So this basically demonstrates that we have a uh, toroidal board. So it wraps around from north to south and uh, east to west. You'll have to take my word for it. I'm not going to show any code running or anything like that, but this is the test that I used, and uh, it actually worked. Um, so yeah, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the, the challenges that we had. Um, so first one, uh, basically, because we don't have a lot of instructions and we don't have a lot of space to fit instructions in, uh, we started having to economize on things. And so uh, one of the things I economized on was figuring out what the next state of the cell should be. So. If you remember uh, in the game of life, uh, if you have a dead cell and it's surrounded by three live cells, it'll be alive in the next generation. And if you have a live cell and it's surrounded by two or three live cells, then it will be alive in the next generation. Um, that's a fairly complicated set of conditionals that takes a little while to encode. So instead I encoded everything in this uh, bitmap, which exists down here. So here's the code that runs it. Here's the bitmap and I basically, uh, calculate a mask that contains the, that, that has one byte set for the cell that's alive. And then um, I can compare that mask to either the dead or the alive part of the table. So if I have a current cell that's dead and it has five neighbors, um, I compare it to my dead part of the array. And I see that these things don't line up. So it's not gonna be alive in the next generation. If I have a current cell that's alive, I compare it to the alive part of the array. And I see that, uh, two and three are possible values. So I get a one here when I add these two together and I know that my cell is alive in the next generation. Uh, calculating groups of neighbors, basically writing loops is a little tricky. And so um, 
I ended up instead of doing a nested loop or anything really complicated where I was calculating like north, south and all that, I just encoded all that down here in pairs. And then I wrote one loop that loops through this whole thing. And when it gets to a sentinel value, it stops uh, looking at them. So this is how I figure out what my neighbors are. So um, anyway, that's kind of it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, if you ever want to talk about weird assembly language stuff, uh, hit me up. <laughs>